Hey there, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to implement the zoom and the rotation of our camera pawn. So again, where we were previously in the BP camera pawn, we're just gonna open this back up and we'll get straight into this. The first ones we'll implement will be the zooming in and the zooming out. And remember, we do have inputs for these as well. So if we just search for the zoom in and zoom out input actions, and we'll just get started with these. Okay, so if these on the zoom out, all we want to do is add a small value to the current location of the camera and move that closer. And on the zoom in, we'll do the opposite. And instead of actually using the location of the camera, what we'll be using is the spring arm and we're gonna be changing the size of the spring arm. So this makes it nice and flexible for us. And of course, like I mentioned, we also have, if you ever wanted to reset this, we've set something up in the construction script. So we have the default arm length and we can set it back to that at a later time. So if we do the zoom in, first of all, we just pull off of the spring arm and we'll get the target arm length and we'll set a value on top of this. So we're going to say target arm length uh, plus float. So float plus float. And then whatever the return value of this is, we want to be our new target arm length. So we're going to then press Control W on the spring arm again so that we get another reference to this. We'll pull off of this and we'll say set target arm length this time. And the value that we plug into here, of course, will be the value we've just calculated. And we want to plug that whenever the, the mouse wheel is pressed or not pressed, it's scrolled, but it's still classed as a press. Uh, and that is going to be our function. That is our zoom in function. And zoom out is very, very similar. So we can copy this logic. We can paste this over here and we'll plug that in and we now have the zoom out. Now, if we say that we wanted this to be a value of uh, 10 units every time we scroll, um, in fact, like I said, the zoom in is minus, so we're gonna say minus 10 units. And then the zoom out will just be plus 10 units. So that's gonna be how we're gonna work these out. And of course, this is something I wanted to kind of reiterate and go over again. We're using pretty much the same logic twice here. This is gonna be something else which will work really well as a single function. So if we take this and we will collapse all of these nodes to a function again, and I'm just gonna call this one zoom. Okay, so we now have our zoom function. The only thing that we really need to change is we're gonna come back in and where we've got zoom, I'm gonna take this value and we're gonna plug that again into the function. This is gonna give us a float input and I'm gonna change this to the zoom speed. And this is helpful as well because we now know what that value was, whereas previously it was just a, a kind of a random value that didn't really make any sense to anyone looking at it. Uh, we now know exactly what we're passing in. We're passing in the speed at which we're going to be zooming in or out. Okay, so now what we have here is our function where we can zoom in. And we're just going to change this back to minus 10. So we now know that minus 10 is the, uh, the zoom in speed. And although we've, uh, we've only just made this, I'm going to delete all of those nodes. I'm going to control W to get the zoom again. Uh, we just need to compile so that this uh, refreshes everything and then right click and select the refresh nodes just to make the warning or error go away. And we'll change the zoom speed for this one to plus 10. So we can test this out quickly. If we press play, we can see that this is me zooming out and zooming in exactly as I expected. And uh, that is all working. So we can move on to our rotation. Likewise, the rotation is very simple. So this is why I wanted to place both of these into a single video. They didn't really need their own specific video. They're not gonna to be too long. And again, we have these inputs ready to go. So if we find the input axis this time and we want the rotate hos and rotate vert, or of course, whatever you've called yours in the project settings. Okay, so we have the two input functions that we want and off of here, all we want to do is first of all, we want to check whether or not we have our click held. And this is why we've uh, made this value earlier. So we'll control drag in the click held and we'll get a branch check here. Okay, so if click is held, then we want to add the actor world rotation. And this is actually really important. So the horizontal is going to be the world rotation to allow us to rotate around the actor itself. And we're gonna use something slightly different for vertical. And if you try using something else, or you try using the same for both, you're gonna get some kind of weird gimbal lock issue going on where it's kind of rotating around itself on different axes that you don't intend. So make sure that you're using the correct things here. So we're gonna use the actor world rotation for the horizontal. Uh, we want to pull off of this. And there's two options here. I'm actually gonna choose this one. I'm just gonna right click and split the structure pin. You can also pull off and say, uh, make rotator, but it just means that you end up with an extra node. Besides that, there's really no difference. And it's just again, preference and tidiness. And what we want to do is we're gonna pull off of the axis value. We're gonna multiply this by a float. So float multiplied by float. And the value again, we're just going to pull off this time and promote this to another variable. So we'll say promote variable. And I'm gonna call this the rotate speed or the rotation speed. Okay, so we've got our rotation speed. We should probably fill this with something so we don't forget later. And a fairly decent value seems to be something of about five units. And again, you can update this as and when, depending on how you feel. 
And quite simply, for the horizontal rotation, so if we go into our map, this is going to be a bit weird because we're at an angle, but we can test what we want to uh, rotate around. So X, we can see not quite what we're looking for. Uh, if we drag on the Y again, not quite what we're looking to rotate around. Uh, it is, in fact, for the horizontal movement, you can see that if we rotate the Z axes, that is more of what we're after. So it's the Z axes, or if you highlight over this, you get the Yule. It's the Yule value that we want to rotate. So we're going to plug this in to the Yule or the Z axis there. So that's going to be our rotation. When the when the mouse is moving, we're going to update the rotation of the uh, actor world rotation. Now, very similar. So we can actually get the same nodes apart from the rotation. So I'm just going to copy all of this and we'll plug this in to the rotate vert, plug that in to the axis value. So we're multiplying this axis value again by the rotation speed. I found generally the same rotation speed for both works quite well. So it's a more universal feeling. So you know how fast you're moving. And again, uh, this time note what we want to do is we want to add the actor local rotation so this is the important bit again is that this time rather than world rotation we're using the local rotation and we can once again just break this down so we'll split the structure pin you can do the test if you wanted to again but we already kind of know that for this uh, the only other thing that we want to rotate is the y-axis which is going to be our pitch forward and backwards so again if we hit compile we can press play and likewise if i now click and hold and rotate so this is moving the camera sideways and then moving the camera up and down, or the mouse up and down, sorry, and we have the rotation that we want. Now, the one thing that you can see is kind of weird is that we can look away from any actor because we've not focused in on anything. So the cool thing about this is if we do click on the floor and now rotate, we actually rotate around the floor, which is quite nice, so we can actually keep the focused actor in view. So for this reason, one thing I like to do is I'm going to come back up to the event begin play, and when I say back up to, of course, we've deleted this. So I'm going to create an event begin play up here. And from this, uh, if we have a valid actor, then I just want to automatically zoom in on this. So I'm going to give this a second delay, just to give the player a little bit of time to see what's happening and work out what the, uh, the world is. And then after that second, if we have a valid actor in our focus actor value, so we'll pull off of this and say is valid. If so, then I'm going to use the same variable and we're just going to say, and we're just going to call the move to focused actor. Okay, so nice and simple. That is our function being called. And this is just a safety check so that we don't move, try and move to something which potentially won't exist. Now, of course, you're probably wondering how this is going to be filled on the event begin play because we haven't done anything yet. So what we want to do as well on top of this is we're going to press the eye icon here so that we can expose this. We'll hit compile, go to the main window, select the camera, and we can see we now have the focused actor. If we get the pipette, we can either click on the, the floor, or of course we can just drop this down and find the floor actor. So that's now something that we have control over. This is gonna be quite handy for designers if you have, uh, every level is gonna have, say, a default focused actor or something that you know is gonna be of interest to begin with, and then the player's got freedom afterwards to move around. Uh, and this just means now that when we press play, after a second it will zoom in, and when we start rotating and everything, it's gonna keep us locked and clamped to a fairly decent position. Now again, there are things like we can uh, rotate over ourselves and this is gonna be fixed in future videos. It's gonna be a little bit of a in-depth subject. So that is something that I wanted to keep for its own video just for, again, easy reference. And because this one's already getting it a little bit lengthy. But that is just a quick function I wanted to add, uh, really not a necessity. And the, the great thing about this is that because we've got our safety check, if you decide you don't want that or you forget to input it, so if we just clear this, it quite simply won't do anything, it won't break anything, it won't be any different as if we didn't do that, and it just means that we have to click at least on the first actor. But I'll leave that one here for today, and as always, if you've enjoyed the video or found these useful, again, please do leave a like and share the video around, I really do appreciate that and it really does help. And of course, if you wanted to be kept up to date with any of the content from any of the playlists on the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and as ever, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.